which was great. We were able to, to vet a lot of different people. It was a, a job and a, a set of jobs that were very, very coveted. And we found that out quickly, uh, which is obviously a great thing. And uh, yeah, we, we had a we had some parameters in mind, certainly that we were that were non-negotiables on on what we wanted. Certainly, starting with the defensive coordinator hire, and you know, wanted somebody that we felt like could you know, really adapt to the skill sets that you have. And and but in college football nowadays, that are ever changing, um, uh, we wanted somebody that had had certainly success, and and we wanted to have a little bit of a, a professional flavor uh, in there as well with the entire staff. And we were able to accomplish those things. And obviously, you know, getting Coach Lynn. Uh, being able to, to hire some of the assistants that we did was was a big deal, and it, it really all though, if you, if you had to sum it up, it really all centered around one word for me that was which was development, um, and I think development of the defense as a whole, uh, development of our schemes, development of of our players individually at the different positions, and you know I wanted guys that I felt like had a great history of that that you could you had like proof that. Whatever situation they went into, whether as a head coach, coordinator, position coach, whatever level, they went into those situations and made they made those places, those defenses, those players better. Like you had tangible evidence of that, and uh, and we just said from the beginning, we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about the quality of job that they already have. Like it's we're not gonna we're not gonna be bashful, right? This is USC. There's a lot, a lot of people that want to work here. Pretty much everybody, and. So we're going to have a shot at anybody, and uh, and I give a lot of credit to Jen Cohen and our administration. They let us be, uh, you know, very aggressive with that. They they you know we shared a very similar mindset from the very beginning, and I think that's you know in large a, a large part of why the staff came together the way it did. Coach Jordan mentioned it. Haven't seen you in a while. I, I missed you. The big fellow was. Missing <laughs> that's you. right, and, baby. Uh, we get back here in our ch- chairs on Monday for a couple weeks in a row. Talk some ball. That'd be great. But kind of fill us in on on what's been going on. Obviously, the coaching searches were going on, and, and uh, high school recruiting. Uh, fill in that gap of re- when the season ends till till spring ball. What what, what exactly you got going? Yeah, it's it, it's it's funny in, in a weird way. It, it almost gets busier <laughs> when it, when it ends. I mean, December alone is is. Very unique, you know, especially when you add in the the coaching hires that we were making during that period. But yeah, obviously, you know, bowl game was awesome. Um, guys played great. We were able, and I think our fans were able to see. We've been really excited. Obviously, the things that are happening on Saturdays, you're fighting your tail off every day. But you also there's a whole another part to college football, and that's what the fans don't see, mm-hmm. and that's what you see on the practice field. What's developing, kind of what's coming. And you get a sense of that as a coach. And so we were really excited going into the bowl game, even though we didn't have a lot of the guys that we played with throughout the season because it was like, all right, everybody's going to kind of get to see what we've been seeing. And, I, you know, we all saw what happened. Um, so that was, you know, that that was obviously a tremendous night. And then, yeah, from there it was uh, finishing up the coaching staff hires, uh, certainly right in the middle of recruiting. Recruiting was because of – you know, basically half the staff turning over. There was still maybe a little bit more to be done in January than you maybe typically would have um, because we were patient with some of those spots. You wanted to get these defensive coaches hired to make sure that the guys we were taking fit into the vision of where we were headed defensively. Um, so January was was a, a race all over the country to do that. Not only that, but start to, to or continue to evaluate some of the younger players across the country, and then. Uh, team got back uh, in early January, and we've had a, a really good off-season stretch. It's it's been really nice this year. The Week Zero game was cool last year, but it it, it cramps everything. Yeah. It's it, like it's not just oh you play a week earlier. Like everything has to happen a week earlier. So we've had really a good full off-season, and uh, we've made some really some tremendous gains in the weight room. The the numbers alone. I mean our defensive line. I mean, to give you an example, our d- defensive line, it's uh, up 340 pounds okay. uh, from where they started um, in January, wow. which I mean, just one position group now. I'm close to that number, <laughs> actually, myself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we put on a Sean Cody. So, uh, yeah, but no, it's and, and it's it's fun to just kind of see that, right? And and each, each group had their own goals, but we, we physically, um, you know, we, we've hit some of the, the marks that we set for our guys. And. Yeah, and then obviously, you know, we've been gearing up for spring ball here for a while and can't wait to get started. 
given the timeline you, timeline you just laid out, it seems like the new coaching staff has only been together a couple of weeks, given that they were all on the recruiting trail. What's that been like gelling together as a new staff? Yeah, it was a rush to kind of get back and get started. You're right. I mean, January, you're just spread out all over the country. Um, and so really the first time that the defensive staff was actually in a room together uh, was like the first week of February. Mm. Um, and... And so, obviously, they communicated, and a few of the guys, you know, that we hired, you know, uh, Coach Belk, obviously retained Coach Nua, uh, Matt Entz, some of those guys who had already been here. You know, Eric wasn't here yet. He was finishing up uh, with the Rams. So, um, yeah, and by the time we got the rest of the sports staff in, it was like mid-February. So, it's been, a ru- it's been um, I'm going to say rush, but we've had to hustle it along to, to get it installed. But these guys, you know, you could see why they were all pretty highly coveted. I mean, they, they, they're they really good teachers. They've uh, Dan, Danton's done a great job leading the room, and it's been fun to, to see our installs come together. You're listening to the head coach, Lincoln Riley, here on Trojans Live. We're going to talk to Miller Moss uh, in a little bit. Coach, he was obviously so fantastic in that Holiday Bowl. Uh, what does what the quarterback competition look like uh, this spring, going into summer, into camp? Uh, how do you sort of lay that out? Yeah, three guys will rep. Uh, Miller will rep. Uh, Jay Maevo is a transfer that we brought in from UNLV. Uh, will rep, and then Jake Jensen will rep. Um, and yeah, and all three have you know now have game experience. Um, and Miller, as you said, was was fantastic. Not just in the game, but really the entire six week lead up to that bowl game, and not just quarterback play, but from a leadership perspective. I thought he, I thought he just he did an outstanding job. Obviously excited about his progress and the momentum coming off of that. Uh, we were really excited to add Jaden. Um, we thought he was a, a really talented young quarterback. And after the after the bowl game, we 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 backed off from a, an older uh, transfer target, and we set our sights a little bit more on the, the two things we wanted. We wanted the guy to be young, but we wanted him to have played. Um, and those were like our two deals. Like we knew we wanted some a little more competition in the room. We needed another body in the room, but. We wanted somebody that had been on that field before, and so he fit it perfectly, and, and so we, we were thrilled about that addition. And then Jake Jensen did a great job throughout the bowl game and came in on the big yeah, you know, fourth down. down play. And I mean, that was a monster <laughs> play in the game. And so, uh, um, yeah, we'll, we'll rep those three and, and uh, see where we're at after spring. Yeah, coach, you got spring ball coming up, and, and every year I think it's interesting. You, you got to you got to kind of find new leaders on your team, right? It's it's kind of a reset of your team. Who are guys? You got maybe a chance to look at that for for during the bowl practices and kind of say, okay, what's next? What's next on the horizon as far as leadership? What do you see? Like when when you're looking at spring ball, are you are you looking for trying to find those leaders going up into the season? We are. You know, I, I've I've. I think early in my career or earlier in my career, I guess I would have been maybe a little quicker to just say, well, we think it's going to be this guy, that guy, and that guy. Like, I don't know, more I've gone on, I, I, I prove it. Yeah. You know, prove it. Whether you're a guy that's already been in our program, you know, whether you're a new guy that just got here, like whoever you are, wherever you came from, like prove it on this team right now. Mm-hmm. And so I think there's some, some really good potential leaders in this group. There's some guys that have been good leaders for us here. We brought in a couple of guys from other schools that I think have shown the capability to be outstanding leaders, have been at their places. You know, you think about, you know, Easton, um, you think about Akili Arnold, you think about some of those guys that were leaders in their own programs. And so, um, but it'll be interesting to see how it comes together. We're, we want to position those guys, but then, you know, you want the guys that are going to step up and they're going to do it right now, um, regardless of how they came in. So uh, excited to see it come together, but I do like the potential that we have right there right now. Coach Linton prefaced that uh, spring camp is going to be a very slow install. Mm-hmm. From your eyes as a head coach, what are the indicators of success that things are moving the way it should? Yeah, well, to your first point, yeah, it's it's been it's been really fun to watch our installs happen because they are they're 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 very slow is one word, but it's it's very patient. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very detail oriented. It's not in a hurry. It's not a race to see how many things we can get in. Like we've got time to do that. It's 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 the things that we do put in, making sure the guys understand it very well. And it's taught, um, it's taught very well at the beginning, right? And you, we've all heard the saying, right? You aim for the moon and you're off by an inch and you miss by a hundred million miles, right? <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's that mentality. And it's been, it's been fun to see how methodical we've been with the, um, with the approach. Um, and I think our guys have really taken to it. Uh, and, and the word, I, I think what I'm looking for is two things. I think, I think one would be, that we're constantly making progress, and two, just the confidence in the group, uh, the confidence that the group has to go execute the calls that we do have. Because if you're going to be patient like that, 
that should be rewarded with a confidence from the group because the, there has been a lot of time invested in these different calls. They should really know them inside and out and be able to go execute, and that should happen in spring ball. You know, in a unique circumstance, you got to coach against a game plan against Coach Lynn at the end of last season. You know, d during that process, what, what stood out to you as an opponent? Yeah, um, well, they, they just did a tremendous job. I mean, they, uh, you, you saw the difference in the defense from, you know, from two years ago to last year. Uh, and I thought they were able to adapt to the different offenses they played where they, they changed enough where they didn't look exactly the same each week and were a little bit of a moving target. Um, but a lot of teams that do that, they don't do it well, right? <laughs> it's like they're trying to do so much, they're just not very good at it. I was impressed with even in like year one for for coach that even with their adjustments week to week and the changes they made, like their guys did it well um, and were able to defend different styles of offenses at a high level. So um, yeah, no, I thought obviously thought enough of them that that uh, you know he was one of the first names that popped to mind when we uh, you know when we went on the hunt for uh, for a new defensive coordinator and uh, you just. You know, you don't see guys make that type of impact that quick, like very often. That's just that's that's pretty rare. Yeah, coach. Offensive line wise, you lose you know, Justin Dietrich and, and Kingston inside. You get to keep uh, Jonah Monheim. It's a big piece coming back. What do you see that group of in spring? What are you going to be looking for to, as they kind of, as they develop? Yeah, we we definitely got to take some steps there. I mean, I think uh, you know that that's a group that that last year uh, we weren't you know we weren't we feel like we just didn't quite hit our potential mm -hmm. there, um, and and so. Uh, yeah, you're right. Obviously, Jonah coming back is a big deal. Um, you know, he's going to um, step inside and play center for us, um, which will be you know great for our program this year. And it'll be great. breaking news. You should have played the breaking news. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it'll be great for his career long term as well. Uh, so I thought it was a you know really mature decision on his part that'll pay dividends yeah. down the line. Um, yeah, and then you've got you know I, I think we've got a chance to be a pretty big group. You know, Pregnon really came on. He played his best game in the bowl game. He's he's. He's so much different than he was like last year at this time. I mean, he has made a, he's made huge strides. We're really excited about some of the young guys, you know, in the interior, Lonnie Noah, uh, Amos Talele, Michael, Van, Michael Van Welos. Uh We get Gino back, which will be great after getting injured early in the season last year, uh, Killian O'Connor. And then, you know, I mean, tackle wise, I mean, you know, shoot, Elijah Page came in and in the in the Holiday Bowl. And, I mean, and dominated. Yeah. I mean, dominated. I mean, he he, you know, probably played the best game that a tackle played for us all all, all year last year yeah. against a quality defensive line. So we were really pleased with his progress. Um, Murphy came in and did some really good things in that game as well. You know, we're excited to see uh, Tobias out there. We've got, you know, Lolo, some of the new young guys that are here. So uh, it's an exciting group. It is. I'm, I'm excited to watch them compete, excited to watch them play. Um, uh, they, they've got an edge and a chip on their shoulder, and, 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 and you have to have that um, at that position, certainly at this school. And uh, we got to take a step there, and this group's very focused on that. Exciting spring ahead for USC football. Can't wait to see Coach's team out there at the Coliseum. April 20 is yep. the spring game. Uh, all season ticket holders will get uh, complimentary tickets, so make sure you get your season tickets and uh, go to usctrojans.com slash tickets for more information. Thank you, Coach. Monster Energy, the, en the official energy drink of USC. And unleash the Beast. And hey, Trojan fans, did you know the Ralph's app gives easy access to weekly sales and personalized coupons? You can earn fuel points, too. Check out the app today and say, well, you cheer us on to another great season. Ralph's proud partner of USC. SC Athletics. As promised, Miller Moss, fresh off six touchdowns in the Holiday Bowl, will join the show next.